Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about purine degradation and you know purines, when we use the term purines, we're talking about the nitrogenous bases with the two rings and we have the, in terms of the base, we have the adenine and we have the guanine which are the purine bases. So you have to be able to differentiate between the bases and the nucleosides and the nucleotides. So guanine and adenine, they're basically just the bases. So since this is purine degradation, um, where do we start with? We start with adenosine monophosphate. Now adenosine monophosphate is the nucleotide. Adenosine diphosphate, adenosine triphosphate are also the nucleotides. And we also start with the inosine monophosphate which is also a purine. Right? And we will also start with guanosine monophosphate which is interestingly also a purine. So first of all, the, the, enzy the enzyme in each of these cases is the same. It is a nucleotidase, a 5' prime nucleotidase. And that is easy enough to understand because all of these are nucleotides and we have to break up these nucleotides and then an, a hydrolytic enzyme we use protease to mean the protein is being broken down with the use of water so same situation over here right so this is the action of what you would consider a nucleotidase so h2o is entered because as you can see this is a hydrolytic enzyme like any hydrolytic enzyme you would have come across before and this is this will be the case for all of these reactions right anyways so what happens is because of this hydrolytic reaction it is actually the phosphate that is removed the difference between the nucleotide and the nucleoside are the phosphates so that is something you have to understand the difference between the nucleotides and the nucleosides are the phosphates so what we are left with is adenosine inosine and guanosine now interestingly the pathway for the degradation of the inosine and the adenosine they converge so this is how the reaction is going to be happening so this is the nucleoside and this is the nucleoside and this is the nucleoside right so now the name of the enzyme is going to be interesting and it's going to be the same over here and over here and that will be purine nucleoside and some nucleoside don't accidentally write the nucleotide because it is a nucleoside purine nucleoside phosphorylase because phosphorus is being used in a lyase reaction it is being added and then it is being removed and same enzyme over here this is an important enzyme i will explain to you how because its effect leads to a disorder and because of the purine nucleoside phosphorylase, first of all, there is an addition of a inorganic phosphate. In either, both cases, inorganic phosphate is being added to actually end up removing the sugar portion. With the sugar portion removed, we are just left with the base. This is the same for both cases. So the base in inosine, the nucleoside inosine is hypoxanthine. Right? And the base in the case of guanosine is guanine. Right. So interesting thing that you must not confuse this. This is the base and this is the base. And we have a convergence over here. Now the hypoxanthine, which is the base, is converted into another base, which is xanthine. And the guanine is also converted into xanthine, interestingly. So we have the second convergence happening over here. And the name of the enzyme is thankfully easy. In this case, it is xanthine oxidase. And over here, it is the guanase. Now, in both cases, in order for this to work, what is happening? It's a bit different. Over here, right, let's write down xanthine oxidase. And over here, let's over here. Let's let's write down guanase. 
So water is being added because this is again hydrolytic reaction in order for there to be a release of ammonia. And this is understandable because when there was the purine de novo synthesis, there was the conversion of inosine into guanosine. So I'm hoping this one makes sense over here. So now we have a convergence. In xanthine oxidase, it is an oxidase, so we are going to need water. And because it is also hydrolytic, we need H2O. So this is simple enough to understand. And the byproduct is going to be H2O2. You have to understand that the degradation of all the purines will give you one main product, which is uric acid. And that should make sense to you because whenever there is a problem over here in degradation or it, or generally a problem in the metabolism, it often leads to hyperuricemia, primary or otherwise. And what was this enzyme, this last converging enzyme? That too was xanthine oxidase. And that will also using O2 and H2O. And the, and the end product was also similarly H2O2. Now over here you can observe that I did not mention the name of the enzyme that is converting adenosine into inosine. And that is a very important enzyme. It is adenosine deaminase because when you're going from adenosine to inosine because we also produce the inosine uh, from the adenosine from the inosine and adeno synthesis so there has to be a deamination a removal of a nh2 this is a very important reaction and this is a very important enzyme because in severe combined immunodeficiency a genetic disorder there is a deficiency of this and dna synthesis is tampered with and so there is lymphocytopenia and from first year you will know cytopenia means there is a deficiency or a lesser cell count and in the absence of the lymphocytes that are needed there are severe infections and the child suffering from this disorder usually dies before the second year of life so i'm hoping this was helpful if, if it was please like subscribe and leave a comment